Today we're going to talk about some functional groups that occur in organic chemistry. These are by no means the entire list of functional groups, but these are some of the functional groups that we're going to run into when we are dealing with nomenclature. So I'm going to give you some tools to be able to identify the differences between certain ones and recognize how you're going to use them when using them in naming the compound and recognizing how to place them in a structural drawing. An alcohol is a functional group that's a hydroxyl group, which is an OH, which we can move around the carbon chain quite easily. So let's take a look at a few examples. The first example, I have it completely drawn out. You can see the OH sitting at the ending of this chain. I have four carbons in my chain, so I use butte. And then I'm going to use the ending, which is an OL. And it's just going to be simply butanol. You could, you could write one butanol, but because it's on the first carbon, it is not nearly as important. The second one, we're going to try to find the formula. So I'm going to do a zigzag for this one. And I threw in a little bit of a wrinkle right off the bat. Uh, this one says 2-methylheptanol, so I have a branch and I'm using a functional group. So let's first find the chain. So this is a 7-carbon chain, right? So, so there's my 7-carbon chain. On the second carbon, I have a methyl. Now here's the trick. If I'm going to do it in a different color. If I write OH right here attached to that, what I've just done is I've created a hexanol, or sorry, yes, a hexanol. I have created a six carbon chain because the ending now is saying that that's oxygen. So what I need to do is make sure that that is coming off of that carbon a little bit. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. I hope we see that. If I remove that, this becomes my one. But adding that back, that's my one. So that's how that one would look. So that's a little bit of how we're going to do an alcohol. A ketone, the suffix for a ketone is also in the name, which is very nice. So it's O-N-E. So let's take a look at a couple examples with that one. So if I take a look at the first one, I just did a zigzag right off the bat. Reminder with this, actually let's do a little snag into this one. Uh, we're going to do that and that. So where is my carbon one? My carbon one, our priorities list first a bond, a double or a triple bond must get the lowest carbon, but then it's the functional group. So if I number it one, two, three, four, five, six, although my branches get a two and a three, my functional group's getting a five, and that is too high. So I have to consider going the other direction. So if I do this, my functional group gets a two. So let's name this one. First, I will always name the branches first. So I have a four, five, dimethyl. Now, there are two ways to name this one. I'm going to name it the first way. And I'm simply going to say hexanone. Now, if you're asking yourself, I'm confused. You are not saying where the uh, functional group is located. The reason why I don't have to say that is whenever we don't put a number, what do you assume? It's on the first available carbon. So if I say that it's a double bond is on the first carbon, I don't have to say that that's necessarily there because then it's assumed. A ketone has to be surrounded by, the, the carbon's got to be surrounded by two other carbons. So the first carbon that a ketone can even be on is the second carbon. But if you're uncomfortable with that, you could definitely name it this as well. And you are more than correct. So you, you could say... Now, if it were on the third one, you'd have to say it. So if the ketone in blue over here was here instead, it would have to be 4,5-dimethyl-3-hexanone for sure. Okay, let's color, or let's draw this one in. So 3-ethyl-2-ethyl-3-hexanone. 
octanone. Now again, I know I said that you didn't have to do that and I probably shouldn't have done a two, but at this point it's too late. So what I need to do first is make an eight carbon chain. One, two, three. And on my third carbon, I'm going to make my ethyl. And on my second carbon, I'm going to make my ketone. And those are ketones. Now it starts to get a little trickier because some of our functional groups kind of sound very much like each other. So these next two, I'd like you to try to group together and you can see the differences and the similarities between them. So we have esters and we have ethers. Let's take a look at the differences. Let's first talk about the suffixes or what you're using in the names. So an ether, the actual ending to that is ether. So that's kind of funny. And an ester has a little bit of a different ending. More or less, it's owe it. It's owe it. So how do we remember the difference? Well, they both have oxygens in them. The difference is something very specific. Uh, the, the ether is basically going to have an O in the middle, and it's going to be breaking up uh, a carbon chain. And a lot of times you're going to notice that you're going to see R's for carbon chains. So you'll have an, an R on each side, so it'll be two carbon chains on each side. Uh, if you want to be real official, one of them is more of the chain than the other. Uh, it, an ester is a little different. What you do is you have this oxygen that's going to break apart a carbon chain, but in a very different kind of way. So what's going to happen is it's going to actually go to a double bonded O, and then the rest of the chain is going there versus here. Notice, though, this carbon right here is going to be part of my chain. So this is the chain. This is the branch. In a lot of circles, what we actually say is that these are going to be two branches. So let's see the difference between them. So here I have an ester and an ether. And first, if I see both of these, I actually can tell the difference right away. You know why? Because I knew a woman once named Esther, and she wore glasses. And her glasses made me think of her. So I have two eyes right there. And you know what else Esther ate? Esther ate oats. So there's my ending. So Esther eats oats. She eats oats. So I can remember that Esther has two O's in it and she eats oats. But let's go back to the structures themselves. So again, this is my chain. Why do I know that? is because this is a carbon that is connected to the functional group. The functional group is anchored onto the chain. Okay, this is a branch. Because there is no anchor on either side, we're going to say both of these are branches. So what does the naming of that look like? What do we always do? We name our uh, branch first, then we name our chain. So I have one, two carbon so that's an ethyl so i say ethyl and then i have one two three four five so i have five carbons on my chain so i say pentan and then if it was a an alcohol i could say pentanol or if it was a ketone i could say pentanone in this case it's pentanoate because that is my ester so that's ethyl pentanoate the other side is a little different. I have one, two, three on this side, and one, two. If I'm dealing with branches, they're both going to end up in Y. So this is going to be a propyl, just talking out loud here, and this is going to be an ethyl. Well, which one comes first? E become, comes before P. So this is an ethyl propyl ether. By the way, just to show something slightly different, if you had this, one, two, one, two, you'd have two ethyls, right? So we just say diethyl ether. 
So the difference between an ether and ether, I know that I'm dealing with one of them for sure. If there's just an O that's breaking up the chain, the difference is, is that Esther eats oats and she wears glasses. Okay, the next two that we're going to compare, aldehydes and carboxylic acids. Both of these deal with uh, double bonded O's kind of at the end of a chain, not in the middle. We're not breaking them apart. So let's take a look at the differences between these. All right, taking a look at these two, you can definitely see the difference. There's an OH at the end of my carboxylic acid. The reason why it is an acid is that acids, one thing to remember is that H's are easily removed from an acid, so that H is really, really exposed off of that O. Okay, but if you take a look at the left side, it can be written like this, but a lot of times what you'll see is that's the fourth bond, so a lot of times you'll see an H. But that really doesn't do a lot there. So what's the difference from what I'm looking at is that this double bonded O on the left for aldehydes is completely and utterly exposed. So this is what I like to think of. See, he's at the end of a big cliff, and maybe it's lava, or maybe it's a huge monster. But either way, if he falls, he's going to die. And if he dies, he's going to be in a coffin. And if he's in a coffin, he probably has been preserved with formaldehyde, and that's an aldehyde. So that is how I always remember it, that that's an aldehyde. So let's talk about the differences between them. First, let's take a look at the suffixes. An aldehyde ends in A-L, all. It is confusing if you're talking about an alcohol or an aldehyde. be like uh, ethanol or ethanol, ethanol, ethanol. Am I saying O-L or A-L? So you got to be kind of uh, clear with what you're trying to say. A carboxylic acid is a little different. It ends in oic acid. So let's take a look at this. First, as always, my functional group is at the lowest number carbon possible. So this is on a carbon right now. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I could add a bunch of stuff to this and it still would work. So let's just do that. Uh, let's do this and that just to make it more interesting, okay? So an aldehyde always has to be in the end. So does a carboxylic acid uh, for the most part in the naming that we're gonna be uh, starting off with. So I have a three, four, dimethyl hexanol and there is my carboxylic acid that's it so i have to make sure that i'm saying that correctly my hexanol is a six carbon chain with a aldehyde at the end um let's take a look at this one remember this is my one two three four now i could have some branches off of of the oxygen still but i'm going to keep it real simple for today so I am going to say, let's just leave it as is for this one. So this is butanoic acid. And there's my ending. So aldehydes and carboxylic acids have double bonded O's on the ends, but the carboxylic acid has an OH. The last one we're going to look at for today is a mead versus an amine. And these can be also very confusing because they're very, very similar, but there's one way that we can try to remember it uh, when we're taking a look at it. What's interesting about this is both of them have an ending of just their name. So this ends in amine, and this ends in amid. So let's take a look at a few examples. Here's the simplest kind of an example. So let's take a look at this. First off, here is the functional group right here. Now, you won't always see those H's, but understand that nitrogen can bond to three things. So if it bonds to that first carbon on the left there, you have room for two more H's. Same concept on this side, but this is the functional group only. So what's the difference? A double bonded O, right? It rises up. This is how I remember it. It rises up like the D in amide. This is like my double bonded O. Amine stays flat like NH2 does. So that's the difference for me. But let's take a look at how we name this, and then we're going to add a little complexity to it. So this one is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is butanamide. All one word. 
This is where the first carbon is, second, third. So this is propan amine. But just because N can bond three times, it doesn't mean that it's always going to have hydrogens on it. It may have other atoms bonding onto it. So let's take a look at a different example. If I take a look at these two, the one on the left, the amide, is actually easier to recognize than the right. Even if it were longer on the right side, this is really important, is that this right here is the functional group. The functional group has to be located on the chain. So even if I only counted two atoms of carbon on the left and a bunch of carbons on the right, that's still the chain. But in this case, I do have more. There's five here. And there's only two here. So coming off of the N is a branch. So what I'm going to say is ethyl pentan amide. On the right side, it's a little trickier. So if you count this, it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Maybe it's not trickier, but it's just you have to make sure that you are counting because it will matter. For our purposes, and we can deviate from this, but we are going to say that the shorter chain, quote unquote, is going to be our branch and the longer one will be our chain. So what I have right now is a propyl butan amine. Now there are many, many variations of this, but we are starting out on just the basics of our functional groups, and we want to make sure that we are being as rigid as possible so we don't deviate into different kinds of ways of organic nomenclature.